Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included in the Ultimate Base 2.0. In the previous episode, we started moving our critter ranches into a more permanent and automatic setup. Today we're gonna continue with that as well as keep on researching a little bit. There are also a few other things I would like to get started with right away. First and foremost, I decided to actually move the clinic over to this location. I thought this was just a little bit more fitting. Also, you let me know we don't actually need a wash basin. What we can do is have the outhouse inside of the room, but we can disable it. I mean, I don't want them to use it anyways. Something else noteworthy I figured out is the wind tunnel actually screws with the schedule of the duplicants because it takes a really long time to complete that action. So sometimes they skip their meal or skip their bedtime. This is the reason we sometimes have duplicants laying here on the floor actually sleeping. So this is not the best thing when it comes to the schedules. Anyways, let's get things started by actually moving everything here. If we exclude the sculpture as well as the wash basin, we can set up a second triage cart. So what I'm actually gonna do is have two of these carts right there. Then we're gonna do the sick bay. Then we're gonna do the apothecary. And last but not least, we are gonna do the mess table. Actually, the mess table I would like to be right there. And yeah, let's move these guys over a little bit. And then we have the space for a disease clinic. And last but not least, the mess table. This uses it up perfectly. The only problem we have now is power. Hmm, so maybe I do not want to move it after all, but I'm not too happy with the power situation in this place either. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna keep the clinic downstairs, but we're gonna arrange it in a way I just did before. So that basically means we're moving everything, and we also want to disable the outhouse. I mean, what we could try is just connect it through the wire here at the bottom, so we have a little bit of an overload. It is very unlikely that all of these machines are going to be used at the same time, but you know, once it happens, I might just switch it up again. Anyways, that means we can now get rid of these cards and use that space for something more practical. Okay, now I would like to move another critter farm. I'm gonna prepare this room. The next farm we're gonna do is the Sweetle farm. What I would like to see here is a similar design and we're gonna do an additional design like that at the bottom. Right here on the top, I probably wanna reserve approximately five farm tiles for the meal lice. And then the question is, what else do we want? But yeah, one thing I already know is we can go ahead, set up a gas pump right here in order to empty this out. And eventually we're gonna fill it up with carbon dioxide. The system here is now working phenomenally. We're getting around 650 watts back. So we're not quite using 2400 watts here. There's also a break every now and then. But we always have the water at around 50 degrees or below. This is when I'm pumping it out. It works pretty well so far. Also because we're still getting a cold water from this system here, the water overall doesn't get too hot. I also would like to see storage bins everywhere and then of course we want to complete this with the insulated tiles and we can also get rid of this transit tube system here. Okay, then meal lice is gonna be one seed that I would like to see here, not the grub fruits. What else could we have? We could do bond lily, but I believe they need chlorine, yes. Hmm, yeah, I'm really not too sure yet. I mean, we cannot go with too many meal lice, otherwise I'm just stacking it up for no reason. All I need the meal lice for is the juicer here. But look at that, Otto is definitely enjoying it. One bottle after another. Yeah, so maybe we're not gonna need that many farms after all, I just really like the design. So we'll have to see what we exactly end up with. While we have so much plastic, another thing we could go ahead and work on is replace the beds inside of here with actual comfy beds. The comfy beds will upgrade these rooms with plus one morale and if I'm not mistaken I also crafted some more gold. Right here we already have max decor so I think what I first want to replace is this wall here. And there we go, comfy beds for everyone please. One more thing that occurred to me is we can have a bunch of canvases here. So just a couple of paintings to make it look even nicer. Maybe we can fit one of those in there. And I was actually also thinking about some lights. Yeah, we should totally give them lights wherever it makes sense. Also inside of the kitchen area, it would be really nice, I assume. And look at that, we just have a little bit of juice left to do it this way. We're also gonna keep on replacing the wires. We want to make this a really nice place to hang out in. We're also gonna start doing the second aeropod for the bedrooms. 
Bedrooms have been replaced, absolutely wonderful. Do I have enough gold to complete this? 24 tiles I can do. So not quite enough, but better than nothing. We can even craft some more, but slowly and surely I'm running out of gold in this world. I think I actually dug up everything in terms of gold. Maybe we can find some more on the other planetoids, preferably even a volcano. Aeropods are slowly incoming, I'm gonna place some mirth leaves in them. Alrighty, it is now the next day the previous video has been released. As a little side note, I have been bleeding subscribers for the past three days or so and I just got a comment of someone outraged that they have been unsubscribed unwillingly. I've never been bleeding subscribers in a way like this. Every time I check, it's a couple of subscribers less. I've never seen that happening in all the years I've been doing YouTube. So if you were subscribed to me, please check if that is still the case. It is actually quite frustrating at the moment, I have to admit. Anyways, I've been thinking about my plans a little bit and I decided maybe it's now time to go to a fully meat-based diet. If we go ahead and check in the consumables, right over here, the barbecue is giving us plus 8 morale. Most of the time I'm feeding them fried mushroom at the moment, which is plus 1 morale. So if we are capable of switching to barbecue completely, we can assign many more skills. Also, the next stage would then be in the gas range where we can feed them surf and turf. This quality here is actually not representative. I believe it's more around plus 12 or even plus 16 morale they will be getting. Maybe it's just the quality level and not the morale that is displayed there. So I figured what we can have in this place is a purely coal and meat production using the stone hatchlings because they are so easy to feed. This in turn would mean we don't need that many farms anymore, we only need farms enough in order to supply the juicer, the soda fountain, etc. To me this seems like a reasonable goal to aim for. What we could do for instance is have our plastic production here on the very top and then I'm gonna add as many hatch farms as is necessary to feed everyone. And if we do this right we can almost completely automate it. One more thing you pointed out is I don't necessarily need to set up farm tiles. If I use normal farm tiles I can also just use a planting pot which doesn't count as a tile and it has the same functionality. This means I would still be able to separate the rooms, which of course with the stone hatchlings doesn't make really sense. I might just replace these with airflow tiles. You know, I really think this is a good idea. Let's get started with that. On the top we're gonna have our plastic production and then here at the bottom we're gonna start with our stone hatchling farms. So all I want to do is basically copy down the setup we currently have this of course is going to use a little bit of power for each of the contraptions, but only temporarily when we have to pick up items. I probably want to get myself started with at least three of these farms. So we need to do one more here and then one more at the bottom, which also means I would like to reroute my transit tubes. I figured we could actually now use this level right here. I don't really need this anymore. We can go ahead, go down and at this point we would be moving all the way over to here. Right in this place we're gonna set up an automatic incubation slash kill chamber and I already have a really good plan on how to do that as soon as we can get rid of these transit tubes here I also have enough space. We're gonna have one more stone hatching farm here at the bottom and then we just expand as needed. That means all of these tasks I can replace. We can get rid of this farm again also replace these with airflow tasks. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna quickly focus on the transit tubes. So this gets built really quickly as that's the one thing that's holding me off right now. And by the way, the reason I want my Dracos here on the top and exchange all the farms again is because it will give a nicer picture. One Draco farm is always gonna be enough if we have enough patience, but we might have to expand the meat production eventually. I thought about the evolution and kill chamber for a brief moment and I decided I wanna reroute my power. I'm not too happy that it goes down below here, what I much rather would like to see is something like this. Now this is going to fill the upper room up with atmosphere again. If you remember we made this a vacuum so no heat can be transferred. So naturally what we have to do is expel the gases afterwards again. But more importantly I would like this to be built rather quickly. Also we're going to need some heavy watt conductive wire right here. Hmm. Let me see. We might need a ladder to get up there. Oh man, this needs to happen really quickly. Otherwise we're going to overheat the liquid reservoir. So let's say we're going to do this first. Then we probably have to take apart this tile in order to be able to reach the cabling. And while this is happening, the liquid reservoir is not going to be able to output anything. So we have to consider that. Maybe we do it while the cool steam vent isn't active. 
no, I don't think we're gonna run into issues. We just have to make sure everything is set to a really high priority. Okay, it is happening. Please, somebody build this heavy walk conductive wire. I want to see this happen. No, Ren actually requires the skill and Chin is on her break. Okay, there she is, the hero. Come on. Ah, darn saves. So now somebody has to come and quickly pick these up. Set and done. Wonderful. We're gonna priority 9 this as well. And then we only need the gas vent in the joint and we should be cool. In the meantime, this is heating up. Oh, come on. You need to do this quickly, guys. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be in time. Oh, this was a mistake, mistake, mistake. The liquid reservoir is heating up too quickly. It's already at 67 degrees. At 75 degrees, it's gonna overheat and we're totally screwed. And look at this, it actually stagnated at 69 degrees. It's just a universally good number, I would say. In order to move my farms, I'm now gonna activate the carbon dioxide. So this room is gonna fill up with 2 kilograms of it. We should be able to replace these farm tiles and pump the rest of the carbon dioxide in the lower rooms. After that, we can basically transfer the entirety of this farm. I'm just gonna use the atmosphere composition we have in this room. So a pump goes right here, pumping everything up in the upper farm. All we need to make sure is to replace these farms with actual hydroponic farms. There we go. Room is filling up with carbon dioxide. The reason I don't want to replace the farms right here is because I'm afraid that the slime is gonna off gas too soon and that's something we definitely don't want. We're gonna need one more transit tube access point here. Let's make our way inside of it and of course cabling as well. Hmm, I wonder. I could save on a whole bunch of cabling by adding joint plates. I prefer the symmetry. We're gonna have way more than enough resources once we visit other planetoids. Also, now that we have rerouted the power, we can go ahead and disconnect this. And the power setup is gonna be much more overviewish. Okay, looks like we have a fairly decent pressure going on here. The same pressure is still at the top, which means I can now get rid of these farm tiles. And we're gonna replace them with the hydroponic version. Luckily enough, our fresh water is coming from the bottom here. So all we have to do is connect them with a pipe like so. Oh, guys, please think. Why... Why would you do this? You <laughs> Come on! So maybe to fix that, we can cancel this one and then they will take apart that. No, don't hop over, you- oh, Marie! Okay, now at least Ren, we can save him. And Marie, please don't hop over again. Don't do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> These guys, they drive me insane. Please, let's build some hydroponic farms now. Uh oh, I just noticed we don't have that much polluted water anymore. I think we need to take advantage of some we have here on the top. So maybe let's go ahead and try to open this up and then we might want to make our way over. The thing is, if we don't have access to polluted water at this stage anymore, we're not going to be able to maintain our Atmo suits since the reed fiber production requires the polluted water. Another solution to this problem would be to use the polluted water we are getting from the toilets. I mean, right now we're mainly producing fresh water. That means theoretically we could use the fresh water to fill up the toilets and then disinfect the polluted water, bring it back downstairs. That would be a good solution for now. Yeah, I think I might want to fix it this way. Actually, let me not remove this. We're just gonna remove the sludge press. We're then gonna use this water line, bring this upstairs. Uh, hold on. And then this is gonna go upstairs. But instead of going into the vent, we wanna go ahead and hop over this and disconnect this. And we can then go ahead and hook it up to our system here. And this is only gonna be temporary until we have other things producing polluted water. I will have to remember this. However, in this case, we don't want the polluted water to go into the water sieve. We much rather want it to go into our cleaning system. The cleaning system is this line right here. I don't want to connect this anymore and hop over right into this bridge. So we also temporarily want to disconnect this. So this goes straight back up to our toilets. Yeah, I think this might be a reasonable solution to still keep producing polluted water and will give us more time until we have to react. Currently, I only have 28 reed fibers, so it is really necessary that we keep on producing them. I could also just switch to the normal Drekos, but I don't really think it's worth it. It's much easier to just produce it with reed fiber. There we go. Now we can see the polluted water is going straight into the system, after which it will be brought all the way down here so we can use the pitcher pump and then also resupply these farms, of course. 
Well, obviously I didn't manage the transition without any accidents. At some point I was pumping out the air from the top room, which then filled it up with polluted oxygen from the slime. It was just a mess, so I decided to empty out all the rooms. The upper room is now a vacuum, which means we can take apart this pump. And then as you can see here, I already prepared a line that is going to my current glossy Draco farm. So what we probably want to do now is move our current stone hatchlings downstairs. And another thing I would like to do is switch to granite instead of igneous rock. The reason I want to do that is if you have a look down here, all of this is granite. We're gonna get so much granite, also from the other planetoids, we will never be able to use it up, even for multiple stone hatchling farms. This means also with the critter feeders, we want to feed them granite. And I figured we can actually have these at a low priority because the auto sweeper is gonna take care of it nonetheless. So in this case, we want to wrangle up these guys, bring them downstairs. And then all we have to do is copy the settings for each of the farms. For most of the levels, we're not going to be needing these storage bins. I already built a bunch of planter boxes at the bottom. This is where we're going to have the seed storage bin. Uh, actually, checking this out right now, we only have carbon dioxide left. All the polluted oxygen has been taken care of so we can deconstruct the pumping system altogether. This also means I can connect up my carbon dioxide supplies and fill up all three farms with the two kilograms of carbon dioxide we want. I'm also gonna connect this pipe right there and we're now transferring the atmosphere of our Draco Ranch. For the Draco Ranch we can also go ahead and remove these pneumatic doors and you also let me know that the actual amount of critters we can have is 8. We can bump this up to 8 since the eggs are going to be picked up immediately. This is going to have no negative side effect. For the Draco farm on the top we are actually not going to need the critter feeders. We can get rid of those. In the storage bin I would like to keep bristle blossom seeds. And then I guess if we move the grooming station a little bit, we should be able to also place a shearing station. So I'm actually already gonna go ahead and plant a bunch of bristle blossoms here. And then we want to swap this critter drop off point to give us the glossy dracos. Yes, indeed. So get rid of that for now. And we are also gonna wrangle up these guys. Naturally, we're also gonna require some illumination for these plants, which we can take care of quite easily. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Now it's finally taking shape. My plan is working out. We now have again 65 kilograms of polluted water. At some point I was down to like 5 kilograms. Wonderful. Looks like we are at the 2 kilograms mark here. That means I can also get rid of the carbon dioxide intake. I'm gonna remove all of these pipes that should be good for now. Maybe I'm gonna need the carbon dioxide at some point again. We're almost done moving the hatches. After that we can move the Dracos. Now before I forget, one more thing we have to take care of is the cooling loop. At the moment my cooling liquid is going down here to cool down the Draco farm, which of course isn't gonna be necessary anymore. I believe we're only gonna need very little cooling capabilities. I would like to reroute my fresh water source to over here. That means we have to get quick access to those points. Uh, thinking about it, I could actually just open this up for a brief moment. Uh, and I did not mean to do that, I meant to do that. And then we're gonna replace this pipe with our cooling loop that is going through here. So we're just gonna hop over. Then we're gonna cool down each of the rooms with the same liquid before joining back into the liquid reservoir. Actually, the joining back part is gonna be a little bit exhausting. I mean, we do have a lot of pipes going around here. Luckily, some of them are temporary. This means at this point I should be able to move over my slime. Now the question is, we also want to have different plants. I'm not gonna need 10 mushrooms. We could also have mealwood in the joint, but what we cannot do... Oh, that's intriguing. We cannot have the reed fiber. Yeah, looks like thimble reeds are not gonna grow in pots. Well, I already know I want to have approximately 3 mealwood seeds. And then we shall see if we can get by with approximately three of the mushrooms. We will have to focus on these two machines in order to determine whether or not that's enough. The first Dracos are arriving now. This is beautiful. We'll have to clean this place up though. So right now I'm only gonna have one storage filled with slime and the other one we shall fill with dirt. There we go. Cultivatable soil. That's what we want. 
Oh yes, getting rid of all of this is gonna feel incredibly nice. With this out of the way, let's make sure the cooling is actually happening. The cool water is gonna come from this side. Then we wanna go with a bunch of radiant pipes, go up again all the way over and down at this point. Then we wanna rinse and repeat the same thing. So we're just gonna have four pipes that are radiant pipes for each of the rooms. Go down here, do the same, go down here, do the same. And then I guess at this point we can go back and join with the cooling loop right there. So yeah, we could literally just go this way and then replace these pipes as well. We're not gonna need these pipes any longer, no thank you. We have plenty of iron to do our radiant pipes, so let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, I can actually kind of live with that. At this point, I believe we also have enough pressure in the joint, so we're gonna get rid of the last piping system here. Oh, actually, we need to be careful. I don't want the hydrogen to go anywhere it isn't supposed to. Of course, we're gonna need a couple of ladders to make this work. Oh man, this is gonna be a little bit agonizing. You know, I could bring the piping down here, but then if I destroy this pipe, I already know there's gonna be debris in this room. I don't want that. And it also fits because it's the top slot here, which still gives it a nice and symmetrical look. So we're just gonna roll with it. I also learned if I want to take apart these farm tiles, it is best to just destroy every second farm tile and then we're not gonna run into issues, except that I just ran into issues. Ugh, why do you always have to do this to me? I guess we're just gonna roll with it right now. Okay, I decided we're going to wrap up the episode at this point, the next time we can do our kill slash evolution chamber area. I'm gonna try to make this completely automatic. We're also gonna automate all the other farms. Actually, the hatchling farms are already automated. We might still wanna automate our farms so we don't have to fertilize them manually anymore. But I'm mostly looking forward to the kill chamber. One thing I totally forgot about is the Rapple generator. Taking this apart right now. Gonna place a new one right away, getting rid of the heat. Wonderful, make sure it points in the right direction and we can keep on researching. I've made some good progress now. I'm just going through the next tier of research and after that we are done and all we have to do is the space research. But yeah, you can actually look forward to the next episode. This is gonna be a great one that is also gonna free up some more duplicate labor time. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.